Welcome to KXAN News Today. Here are your Friday morning headlines. Tomorrow is election day. School district bonds and trustee elections will be on the ballot, the bulk of what you're voting on. We have answers to your questions that you might have before heading to the polls on our website, kxan.com. Just get ready for some traffic, more people around downtown Austin, and it's because of this. The University of Texas graduation, the commencement ceremonies, they're today and tomorrow. The university-wide ceremony is tomorrow night at 7.30. Big congrats to all the grads. The 48th annual Pecan Street Festival is tomorrow. It starts tomorrow. You can get your food and do crafts. Here's some live music along the way on 6th Street. It's this Saturday and Sunday, and it's free for everyone who wants to get out there. And we are expecting more storms and showers continuing today. This, the look at our severe storm threat for this Friday. And it could be another round later today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Miller. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sally Hernandez. All right, Kristen, we have a lot of things going on today yeah, and do. this weekend, but what are we expecting in the weather? It'll be very similar to what we had yesterday, and that's that threat of okay. isolated, strong to severe storms. So let's begin with the outlook for today. You'll notice we do have that, that favorable risk out towards the hill country, but they're still going to be isolated and covered. What does that mean? That means that not everybody is going to see storms are going to be very few and far apart as far as the coverage goes, but it is a two out of five risk from about the hill country to the western side of Williamson, Travis and Hayes County. The rest of us underneath that one out of five risk. This comes in late day into tonight. Not expecting any of that to impact your Friday morning. We have a mainly cloudy sky out there. Any overnight showers or sprinkles are starting to dry up. This is a live look from our West Shore camera there in uh, San Marcos and we we have the clouds, but we also have some very warm tempters. Look at your temperature map this morning. We're currently sitting at 75 degrees here in Austin, 74 in Bastrop, 73 in Vernon, even out in the hill country, waking up to those lower 70s. So way above average when it comes to your morning lows. And this afternoon will be hot. Forecast high 92 with increasing storm chances late afternoon into the evening. So we're stuck in this same pattern, bringing us late day storms every single day for the next week and most days will have at least a low end severe risk. We'll talk more about that. Plus, we're staying hot and we're staying humid. There's a lot of 90 degree days in your seven day forecast. I'll stretch out that seven day. We'll talk more about your weekend here in a few minutes. Kristen, thank you. We want you to know we have campaign finance records showing out of state money could influence tomorrow's election. This has to do with Austin police oversight. The records show the group behind Proposition A raised a vast majority of its cash from outside Austin. Prop A pushes for more civilian oversight of police and direct access to police records. Prop B, while similar, says access should be granted according to state law. Okay, Xan's Grace Reader learns why the Prop A group gladly took out of state cash and has reaction from Prop B supporters. We're in the middle of a local election, but most of the funding behind an Austin police oversight measure is coming from foundations, not in Austin. I think Austin, whether it wants to or not, is often a proxy for these larger battles that are going on around the country. The group behind Prop A is Equity Action. And city records show of the more than $790,000 they've raised since April of last year, more than 770000 of it is coming from outside of Austin. That's roughly 97%. It's largely coming from two foundations, one in California and one in Oklahoma. But Equity Action says not all of that is campaign money. They're required by state law to report all of it, but say roughly $250,000 is going to other programs and staff. We report everything. We aren't just doing this. The Austin Police Association, who has almost single-handedly funded Prop B, the other ballot measure, doesn't see it that way. They said in part, quote, the APA is aware of the troubling trend in local politics wherein outside sources are funneling large amounts of money into elections that have serious implications for the citizens that live in Austin. It is our hope that future election cycles focus on truly grassroots local campaign strategies. Ultimately, Equity Action says yes, they got a big chunk of money from groups outside of Austin, but say they're using it in a way they think is best for Austinites. It does look like we've raised a lot of money. I mean, we have. We've been successful. I think, you know, we are 
we're making an impact with what we're trying to do. Grace Reader, KXAN News. And the group behind Prop B raised roughly $100,000 during the same time period. Nearly 90000 came from, as you saw, the Austin Police Association. So here's a closer look at why all this matters. It's going to play a role in contract negotiations between Austin Police and the city. Right now, APD officers are working without a contract. It's after both sides were unable to agree on a deal. That previous contract ended in March. City council members and the police chief say they are both holding off on a long-term contract until voters make their choice. The last long-term deal both sides reached was back in 2018, and that contract created the Office of Police Oversight. Well, a part of West Austin has its gas service finally back on after a leak. Texas Gas Service said it fixed that leak on Westbrook Drive near Bee Cave Road. It says on Wednesday, a third party hit the natural gas line and that caused it to leak and all that smoke to come out. The leak shut down the area, even evacuated some of the buildings nearby. They say that third party, by the way, is expected to face consequences. The man accused of killing five of his neighbors outside of Houston is not the only person who has been charged in the case. We're going to let you know who else is facing criminal charges. And there is a new parking policy in Austin. What it means for you trying to find a spot. Good morning. This is a live look from San Marcos, the university, or I should say Texas State University campus lit up there in the background as we kick off this Friday morning. Thanks for being with us on KXAN News today. The man accused of killing five of his neighbors outside Houston now formally charged with murder. Francisco Oropesa had his first court appearance yesterday and he's being held on seven and a half million dollar bond. His wife is now charged with hindering the apprehension of a fugitive and faces two to ten years in prison if she is found guilty. We are now three weeks away from marking one year since the Uvalde mass shooting. Ahead of it, the Texas House gave initial approval to a bill that would end the state's so-called dead suspect loophole. Right now, Texas law gives police discretion to withhold information in criminal cases that have not gone through the court process. So this applies to the Uvalde case. Records on the police response are still not public because the suspect is dead. Bill's author has worked on this for years, but he says renewed urgency helped him get support, including from the House Speaker. I think after the investigation that we conducted in, in Uvalde in the wake of the tragedy there, um, it, it really crystallized the need to close that loophole. The issue with it, it became extremely pronounced during, during that investigation because what we needed were the facts. We needed the, the documentation. We needed the videos. We needed to know what happened. So the bill does allow exceptions for active investigations. If it becomes law, those records revealed in Uvalde would, or related to Uvalde would need to remain sealed as long as the DA's investigation is ongoing. As more migrants are crossing into Texas, we're finding out how El Paso leaders plan to house them. Tensions with DPS in Austin continue Why law enforcement groups say the partnership with APD is pivotal to maintaining public safety in the city. The entire basketball community mourning the loss of Longhorn legend Lance Blanks on Thursday. We'll have more on that coming up. Good morning, a live look outside from downtown Austin. You can see the state capitol lit up, UT Tower behind that. Kristen's going to have your full forecast, what you can expect in the severe weather threat on this Friday in just a bit. I want to tell you about a large group of migrants camped near the border in Matamoros, Mexico. They are hoping to cross into the U.S. And take a look at this. This was the scene yesterday. Migrants using ropes and inflatable rafts crossing the Rio Grande River. On the other side, Brownsville, Texas. Mexican officials were there. They were trying to discourage these migrants from crossing. Surge of border crossings is expected next week when a COVID era policy expires. Title 42 allowed officials to deny entry into the U.S. to migrants based on public health concerns. And El Paso officials announced that they are going to use vacant schools to temporarily house migrant families beginning next week. They estimate at least 1,000, 10,000 migrants are waiting to cross the U.S. border. We have KXAN's Anna Warnicke reporting that Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is still at the border today as preparations get underway. 
The Biden administration is ramping up operations at the border ahead of next week, but lawmakers here on Capitol Hill say they're concerned Border Patrol isn't ready. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is at the Texas-Mexico border on Thursday, meeting with local leaders and Border Patrol officials as they brace for the end of Title 42. But back on Capitol Hill, lawmakers are anything but confident. May 11th is a nightmare date for the American people. South Carolina Republican Senator Lindsey Graham says the end of Title 42 will cause chaos at the southern border. There's going to be a dramatic increase and illegal crossings because people are sitting in Mexico waiting to May 11th. When Title 42 expires, border agents can no longer turn away migrants seeking asylum on public health grounds. The Biden administration, I believe, is completely unprepared. Republicans and Democrats say they're concerned border agents and border communities aren't ready to handle the expected surge of migrants. What's going to happen when we eliminate Title 42? Are we going to have an onslaught of thousands of people seeking asylum in this country, and are we ready for them? But the Biden administration insists they have a plan. The administration announced this week they will deploy 1,500 active duty troops to the southern border to assist Border Patrol. They're simply going for a, to, to flesh out what is already an existing mission by DOD on the border with administrative tasks, uh, helping with logistics and sustainment. The troops are expected to arrive by May 10th, one day before Title 42 is set to expire, and the Pentagon says they'll be stationed there for 90 days. For now in Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke. Back to you. Anna, thank you. A bipartisan pair of senators announcing they will introduce legislation to effectively extend Title 42 for the next two years, but the proposal would need 60 votes in the Senate, making it almost impossible to pass before next Thursday when it's expected to end. Countdown is on for the 149th Kentucky Derby right here on NBC. 20 of the world's fastest horses are set to run for the roses at Churchill Downs tomorrow, one year after that historic upset by Rich Strike. So we have the Today Show's Dylan Dreyer already in Kentucky this morning, and she's going to be joined by Mike Tirico and Steve Kornacki, breaking down the fastest two minutes in sports. Can I already tell you what Steve's going to be wearing, right? The white collared shirt <laughs> yep. and the khakis. The khaki is it's a go-to <laughs> staple. Kristen's going to be with a big hat tomorrow. I wish, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's. I think the derby culture is so fun. Not yeah. only with you know the fashion, but the mint julep. Yes, yes. you yeah. know, yeah. like it's a scene. I was watching. They were showing the recipe on how to make it, and I was yes. like, I was like step by step, like oh, okay, yeah, just, right. just a little bit. Not of too mint. hard. Mint, mint, not too hard. Bourbon, <laughs> smack it, do all yes. the things, yes. right? Let me show you what's going on with your <laughs> forecast because maybe you're thinking of doing a derby party tomorrow. Maybe you've got Cinco de Mayo plans today. We need to be watching the weather closely. I'm I'm not expecting widespread storms, but I am expecting the possibility of a few isolated strong to severe storms. So this morning, not seeing much. It's a mainly cloudy sky in parts. A live look outside from our Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center camera there in South Austin. Clear at the bottom, not seeing any issues when it comes to fog here in the metro. Currently sitting at 75 degrees and still fairly humid. We've got hot and humid conditions on the way for the later part of today. So let me jump right into it because we do have a two out of five risk again again for the hill country in parts of the western Austin metro. Those not underneath that slight two out of five risk are underneath a marginal risk. That's a one out of five concern here. We're going to be looking at the possibility of large hail, damaging winds, and a low end tornado threat today. But these will be so isolated that I want everyone to kind of be prepared for it. Just know that most of us are going to stay dry. The timing of this looks to be late day into this evening. And I'm going to show you just one model interpretation of what radar could look like today. Kind of like yesterday, these storms are going to pop up where they want to. There's low certainty as to the exact placement of these storms. So I think the hill country will certainly be favored, but that storm could be up towards Burnett County. It could be down towards Gillespie County. It could be Clippin Hayes County. We'll go isolated storm chances for today. Tomorrow, another isolated risk of some strong to severe storms centered over the hill country. We're going to do it again on Sunday. So every single day as we get into today, tomorrow, Sunday, and probably again on Monday, we're going to be looking at isolated storms with the potential that some turn strong to severe, but not all of them. Everybody else playing on the heat and humidity. If you don't see storms, you're going to be baking with those 90s and that high humidity. Seven days shows 20 to 30% chance of storms. 
today, tomorrow, and Sunday. Your highs will be in the upper 80s to low 90s. We're going to repeat this pattern over and over and over again for most of next week. Temperatures down to the middle to upper 80s by Wednesday. Kristen, thank you. A bill to expand access to the Texas Crime Victims Compensation, Compensation Program is now headed to Governor Greg Abbott's desk so he can sign it. If signed into law, the bill will increase relocation expenses, raise the cap on lost wages paid to family members of a deceased victim, remove certain limits on bereavement leave, and more. The Crime Victims Compensation Program provides money to victims of violent crimes and family members of victims who died. Attorneys General Ken Paxton's office runs it, and we know it awarded nearly $72 million in 2022. A KXAN investigation last year found the division operating the program had lost a third of its workers. The loss substantially slowed down the processing of claims and customer service and left victims waiting months for the help that they needed to rebuild their lives. If you bought Advil from Family Dollar in the last year, you're going to need to throw this out. Family Dollar recalling several over-the-counter Advil products that was sold in stores between June 1st, 2022 and March 31st of this this year. There's concerns they may have been improperly stored. So far, Family Dollar says no one's reported reactions or getting sick. Well, for the first time, there is a caucus at the state capitol for historically black colleges and universities. So first time this is happening. Yesterday morning, HBCU students and state reps, Ron Reynolds announcing it. He says that it will support all HBCUs in Texas as well as affiliated programs such as fraternities and alumni network. We need to make sure as a state that we're adequately funding our HBCUs. We haven't done so. We've been fighting. Uh, I know our caucus has been fighting to make sure that Prairie View A&M and Texas Southern University, two of our state HBCUs, receive adequate funding, and they have not. And there are nine HBCUs in the state of Texas. Nearly four and a half million Intuit TurboTax customers, you're going to get some money back. This includes more than 465 uh, 100,000 Texans. It's part of a $141 million multi-state settlement, including people who filed in 2016, 2017, or 2018. Customers may have been misled into paying into it for federal tax returns when they were eligible to file through the Internal Revenue Service for free. It's estimated that most qualifying Texans will receive between 28 and 29 bucks. The National Football League is at the center of a serious probe involving allegations of workplace misconduct. Two state attorneys general issued new subpoenas. These are investigating claims of harassment, gender pay disparities, and discrimination. The NFL says it will fully cooperate, but that the allegations are entirely inconsistent with the league's values and practices. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Good morning to you. Certainly a sad day on Thursday when the Texas Longhorn basketball community and the entire basketball community learned of the passing of Longhorn legend Lance Blanks. Blanks died on Wednesday in Dallas. He played two years at the University of Texas, 1988-89 and 89-90. Part of that BMW Blanks, Travis Mays and Joey Wright, one of the most exciting teams in the nation. They went to the Elite Eight in 1990. Two years and still... Over 1,200 career points went into the UT Hall of Honor in 2007. He was drafted, played in the NBA overseas, and then an NBA executive, including GM with the Phoenix Suns. His team was honored in 2015, the 25-year anniversary of that 2015 team. Lately, of course, he's been part of Longhorn Network and ESPN broadcasts. And last night before the Lakers-Warriors game, Warriors head coach Steve Kerr, the first thing on his mind was Lance. Lance uh, has been in the NBA for a long time, was a, a good friend in San Antonio. He was in our front office when I was playing. We spent time at uh, Basketball Without Borders this past summer um, together. Um, and um, just a devastating um, bit of news uh, today that we received. And uh, so I want to offer my condolences to uh, to Lance's family and all of his friends. and. Um, he will he will be missed. It's a, it's a terrible day. Blank survived by his mother, his brother, two daughters, and a granddaughter. He was close with UT head coach Rodney Terry, so certainly a difficult time for Terry mourning the loss of his friend. At the same time, trying to rebuild that Longhorn roster 
And on Thursday, two more pieces to the puzzle. Longhorns get two commitments out of the transfer portal, including Kendall Weaver, a six foot two guard from UT Arlington. He's from Mansfield, Texas. He was a whack freshman of the year, shows great athletic ability. He shoots 40% from beyond three. So that is an immediate help in the backcourt. And also, Terry, very familiar with Zarek Anyema because he recruited him to UTEP before coming to Texas after three years. Two years he played, one year basically a red shirt, 31 starts. He's six foot eight, 230 pounds, and he is coming to Austin as well. So the roster is taking shape. They're still waiting on word from Dylan Mitchell and Tyrese Hunter on what they'll do in their future basketball plans. Texas baseball team opens up Big 12 play tonight at Kansas final road series of the regular season and the softball team final regular season home game taking on Baylor. Thanks for joining KXAN News today. You can also listen to KXAN News nightly every weekday after 5 30 p.m. for in-depth coverage on what matters most to you.